Have you ever wanted to turn your old infrared control devices into something smart? Something that works seamlessly with Home Assistant or Alexa? Well, in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to build your own ESP8266 based infrared controller that can both receive signals from your remote and send them back to control your devices. We'll go step by step from the hardware you need to wiring it all together to setting up ESP Home and Home Assistant so you can automate everything. Hi, I'm Keen. And if you love building cool DIY tech like this, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more tutorials. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully working infrared smart hub that not only talks to your TV, sound system, air conditioner or radio, but also listens to your original remote to keep everything in sync. So let's jump in. First, let's take a look at the hardware we'll be using and why each component is essential. So what we'll need to start is an ESP32 module. What I have here is an 8266 D1 Mini. You'll also need a PCB board or you can even use a breadboard. What I have here is just a double sided PCB board that you can get off Amazon for fairly cheap. And um, the size I chose here was just 70 by 30. An infrared receiver, the exact model will be in the description. An infrared LED transmitter, it's going to be very important. Now, one of the key components in this build is the NPM transistor and it plays a very important role. The transistor is crucial because the 8266's GPIO pins can supply enough current to power the infrared LED properly. Think of the transistor as an electronic switch. The 8266 sends a tiny signal to its base and the transistor uses that signal to control a larger current coming from the 5 volt line. We're also going to need a 100 ohm resistor and a 1000 ohm resistor. Now, let's get started. Now that the print is finished, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain just some of the wire and how this works. So as you can see here, I've just printed a very simple, very subtle um, 3D case, which I found from Thingiverse. So it just slides in here, so it should fit the PCB board that I'm using almost perfectly. I've also added just some rubber stickers on the back as well, just so they can be mounted easily either to the radio, to the wall or whatever you like as well. Um, it just slides out like that. So what I'm going to go do here now is I'm going to explain some of the wiring and I'll put a diagram up just to explain this too. So to start with the receiver, what we're going to do is we're going to look on the leftmost side, which is pin one or leg one in this case, which just connects to the five volt pin, uh, GPIO pin on the D1 Mini 8266. The middle pin then on the receiver connects to ground and then our leftmost pin or pin 3 on the receiver just connects to pin D3 on the D1 Mini. Next we'll look at the infrared receiver and the rightmost pin which is the long leg connects via a 100 ohm resistor to the 5 volt rail as well and then following on from that then so the rightmost pin on the LED transmitter connects to the collector on the NPM transistor. So the NPM transistor has three pins obviously, so uh, we denote those by CBE, which is collector, base, and emitter. Um, so this pin connects to the collector end, uh, which is pin one, or the way I describe it is pin one on the NPM transmitter. Following on from that then, the middle pin, which is the base, connects to our 100 kilo ohm resistor, which subsequently connects to pin D8 in our 8266. And then the last pin, which is just the emitter and the NPM transistor, connects to ground. And now that that's all done, let's move over to Home Assistant and ESP Home to code this up. Now that we have the hardware ready, 
let's set up our ESP home configuration. I'll walk you through the most important sections of the YAML file that brings our infrared controller to life. I'm opening my ESP home dashboard, selecting my device, and opening the config.yaml file. This is where all the magic happens. This file defines how our ESP8266 listens for infrared signals, transmits commands, and keeps track of our device's state. Let's start with the global section. This line defines a variable called radio state, which stores whether our radio is on or off. We set it as a Boolean value, false means off in this case, true means on, and by using restore value, ESP Home will remember the state even if the device restarts. Next is the remote receiver section. We're using GPIO0 to connect to the VS1838B infrared receiver. The dump neckline tells ESP Home to look for neck protocol codes, which is the format used by most infrared remote controllers. And the on neck attribute checks for specific commands and addresses, in this case, EF00, F00F. When this code is detected, we toggle the radio state variable and log the new state to ESP Home. On the other side, we have the remote transmitter block, which uses GPIO 15 to send infrared signals through our infrared LED. The carrier duty percent of 50% ensures that the signal is modulated like a normal remote control, so our radio can understand it. We also expose the radio state as a binary sensor. This lets Home Assistant see whether the radio is on or off, which is going to be incredibly useful for creating automations and avoiding any conflicts later as well. As you can see here, I have most of my templates set up already for the various different buttons on my uh, rem infrared remote controller. Um, but the first button template is the on-off control. When we press this button at Home Assistant, ESP Home checks the radio state variable. If the button is off, it sends the on command via the infrared transmitter and updates the state. If it's already on, it sends the off command instead. The combination of globals, the infrared receiver, and the transmitter ensures that the ESP8266 always knows the radio's true state, even if we use the original remote. As you can see here, we can add as many buttons as we need, like the volume, mute, source, selection. It all depends on the type of remote that you have and what you actually want to capture with that as well. But these follow the same template logic we've just covered. So now that our configuration is ready, let's upload this to our ESP8266 and test everything out. Okay, now as a quick test, what I have here is I have the original remote control uh, for my radio. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show a side-by-side -side, uh, of the logs from the ESP home device. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pressing some of the buttons on the remote. Uh, and what we should see then from ESP home is we should start to see um, some of the neck codes uh, and addresses being um, logged basically so we press the on off button okay as you can see there we see that there we see the neck address is ef00 and the command is f00f if i press another button like source you can see that come up with a different command as well with the same address and it, it follows the same principle the same same process basically so if i press any code here it will do the same thing as well what you can see there though is in particular with the binary sensor is like the radio state is currently on what i can do is i can set this to off in this case is now so we know that the, the sensor is actually off so it's actually picking up the original remote control to what we wanted to do okay and lastly what we can do is i have up here on my phone i have a list of controls basically for this and um, which is related to the esp32 configuration or 8266 configuration and uh, we can see here these are the buttons that i defined in my config.yaml file um, as well as the state which is currently off basically so what we can do is i can get my flipper zero and we can actually test this so what i can do is i can go down to infrared and just learn new remote which we'll do there and then from my phone i can say let's try turn the radio on excellent and what i do there you can see that it's picked up our neck signal um which is the correct uh code and the correct address so we're working and that's great that's exactly what we want and that's it we've just built a fully functional esp8266 based infrared smart controller that can both listen to your old remote and send commands to your devices with this setup, you can integrate any infrared control device in the Home Assistant and create automation that truly feels seamless. 
Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I've got plenty more ESP home and DIY smart projects coming soon. Have any questions or ideas? Drop them into the comments and I'll be happy to help. Until next time, happy building.